so many people resonate with it, like people of all ages and, you know, all genders. Olivia Rodrigo's debut album, Sour, turns listeners of all ages into angsty, heartbroken teens. Its power boils down to one word, drama. Sour shot to number one shortly after its release, while the perceived behind-the-scenes drama with her ex and High School Musical The Musical The Series co-star Joshua Bassett has continued to captivate social media. There's nothing audiences love more than celebrity drama, especially when it revolves around betrayal and diss tracks. But it also seems that audiences can't help but project their own drama onto Rodrigo's music, as she's captured something universal in the emotions of both her work and the narrative surrounding it. Everyone has had like that like first heartbreak, and that's like a feeling I think you feel so intensely. Most strikingly, in a world where young female artists are often sidelined, pegged as, to quote the lyrics to Good For You, too emotional, and marketed only to young girls, this Gen Z figure has captured a large millennial fan base across the gender spectrum. Here's our take on why we live for Liv's drama and how she got us to both respect and listen to the angry teen girl inside all of us. Dude, are you crying? It's got me thinking about my breakup. Like, maybe I'm Olivia. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. I wrote most of Sour when I was 17, so it's very much like a slice of my 17-year-old heart. The driver's license video highlights the way that the devastation of breakups feels epic and monumental on the inside, even when the external circumstances don't seem that striking to others. Unlike other pop icons, Rodrigo doesn't present a glamorous narrative centered on sex or drugs, but rather, her lyrics are inherently linked to first love, suburbia, and the mundane nature of everyday life as a teenager. I don't think my life is glitzy or glammy at all every day. I do my like environmental science homework and go in the studio and hang with people and then come home and like go to sleep. In Brutal, the lyrics reveal that Rodrigo is mad and resentful, not just at her ex, but also at the world for pressuring her to be unabashedly enjoying her teenage years. With lines like, I'm so sick of 17, where's my f***ing teenage dream? When she sings, if someone tells me one more time, enjoy your youth, I'm gonna cry. And they say these are the golden years, but I wish I could disappear. She reminds us of that strange truth that, while older adults super officially wish to be young or chastise young people because youth is wasted on them, in reality, it can be incredibly emotionally painful to be an adolescent. When you're going through a heartbreak when you're 17, it feels like the world is ending. This leads to perhaps the biggest surprise of Rodrigo's runaway popularity. While all these topics feel explicitly marketed to teens, her music has drawn a huge millennial fan base because of the nostalgia that her type of drama evokes. Even if they're not going through something like that, it's like, oh, I remember when I, when I did feel like that. It like, took me back to then. Her songs allow older fans to return to a 17-year-old headspace and a feeling of teenage vulnerability. And her popularity proves that, on some level, the wounds of youth never truly go away. Rodrigo told Interview Magazine, when it first came out, my therapist called me and she was like, girl, I've been married for 10 years, I'm 40, but this song makes me cry. Rodrigo sings about a level of total insecurity, worrying about how I'm not cool and I'm not smart and I can't even parallel park, tapping into a feeling of self-doubt that remains surprised surprisingly relatable even long after you learn to drive. Rodrigo upped the relatability factor by filming the driver's license video in Utah against a backdrop of anonymous suburbia and striking rurality, perhaps appealing to a wider audience of frustrated teens than if she'd used her own more Hollywood experiences and star-studded set of friends. And it's not just heartbreak that Rodrigo addresses, but every aspect of the teen experience, the complexities of self-image, friendships, and of social media. So all I see is what I, I should be, happier, prettier, jealousy, jealousy. I really was just writing about my experience and I wrote that during a time where I was so consumed with how I looked on social media and how people perceived me. But a big part of what makes these songs appealing to both teens and former teens is the level of insight contained in the pop lyrics. When she analyzes her jealousy of other young women in the line, I know their beauty is not my lack, but it feels like that weight is on my back. This eloquent self-awareness is arresting, almost giving the song the air of an older adult looking back on that time and understanding it more articulately than they perhaps could at the time. And these observations about how envy is born of this need to compare remain far too relevant to many adults' lives. So I've been listening to Olivia Rodrigo and it is bringing back so much nostalgia. Another thing that really connects to memory is smells. I've got this really cool new subscription service, Scent Bird. An incredible fragrance subscription service that delivers new scents to your door every month. This one is 
Confessions of a Rebel, Let's Be Real. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try it, okay. Ooh, this makes me feel very powerful. This feels very much like a fall scent, doesn't it? Mm. Imagine wearing it while you're posing up. And the feeling of like you're being wrapped in cashmere. Gucci. This is very floral. Scentbird carries so many top designer brands. It's such a luxury, such a little pleasure to kind of unwrap it. And what is your scent for this month? I love these canisters. So you kind of twist them and then pull it out. It's quite a lot. It's about like a month's supply. This could be a whole new opportunity to try out scents that might carry my same signature identity or feel like it represents me, but then I can still change up. So I'm really excited. Andy Warhol actually said that he would change his perfume constantly. He wanted to capture that period of his life. So there's this idea of you change your scent to capture these memories, to freeze a moment in time. And with Scentbird, if you really love the smell, you can also order a larger bottle. I don't really know how to pick a scent. You can take the quiz. The quiz was so cool. It tells you, this is a match for you, your personality, and what you want for that season or for that moment. It can tell me what I want, but I don't know that I want. It's just kind of this nice little thing you can do for yourself. I think we all deserve that right now. I always thought it would be a great birthday Go ahead, try it out. It's just $16 a month, but with our code, you can get it for only $11 for your first month. Click the link in the description below and use our code, the take, for 30% off. Olivia's style and sound also deliberately echo many millennial favorites. Teen Vogue observed that Sour's album art drew inspiration from both Clueless and Lisa Frank, while Rodrigo openly takes inspiration from older generations of music. Lord, totally grew up on Lord. I'm really obsessed with Halsey. Uh, I'm really obsessed with Gracie Abrams. And um, I love like Jack White. She idolizes female-led groups and artists like Alanis Morissette, No Doubt, and Taylor Swift. My favorite album, Folklore by Taylor Swift. That album completely changed the way I think about songwriting. Swift even publicly claimed Olivia as her protege. I can't even believe this. And this is definitely the highlight of my senior year. And because both women write all of their own songs and focus on the highs and lows of young love, it's easy to see why many have labeled Rodrigo as Swift's Gen Z equivalent. Rodrigo also has influential millennials directly involved in her sound engineering process. She's produced by Dan Nigro, who is partly responsible for Sky Ferreira's sound. The song One Step Forward and Three Steps Back samples a Swift melody that was co-written by Jack Antonoff. while Deja Vu interpolates another Swift song co-written by Antonoff and St. Vincent. And Good For You also interpolates Paramore's misery business. The act of interpolation, or using an existing song to inspire a new song, is, as ABC Music site Triple J puts it, a close cousin of sampling. Interpolation is less of a direct copy-paste of a song and more the borrowing of melodies and lyrics to create a new tune that sounds, wow, just so familiar. This is proof of how the music is calculated to appeal to an audience much wider than Olivia's own demographic. In this way, Rodrigo weaves the drama we associate with Swift's back catalog into her own song. So while she sings about the phenomenon of deja vu, we also experience it. Part of Rodrigo's overnight success is based on the fact that she makes everyone feel like a main character with her relatable lyrics and universal themes. Her music success on TikTok even lets her audience directly insert themselves into the drama by using Rodrigo as a soundtrack in videos that position themselves as the main character. Remember when you swore to God I was the I think that pain and heartbreak can be one of the most beautiful, um, you know, creatively generative experiences. Part of Rodrigo's overnight success can be attributed to the way she captures the drama of what a breakup feels like at any age. When analyzed track by track, the songs actually align with the seven stages of post-breakup grief. Let's take a look. Phase one of post-breakup grief, shock and denial, is perfectly embodied in Sour's first single, Driver's License, where the singer states that she just can't imagine how you could be so okay now that I'm gone. The central imagery of the song is her feeling disoriented, that after she and her ex looked forward to her getting her license, she's now finding herself driving alone past his street. It's an astute articulation of the alienation and disbelief that characterize the initial aftermath of a breakup. The song was about sort of this really painful, um, 
vulnerable, like weak moments in my life. In One Step Forward, Three Steps Back, she sings about worrying over things like, did I say something wrong? And going over everything I said, expressing the confusion of trying to piece together where you stand with someone as a relationship as falling apart, especially when you're doing your best to ignore the red flags or deny that it may be ending. Post-breakup grief phase two is pain and guilt. As Healthline writer Kimberly Holland writes, you may feel that the loss is unbearable and that you're making other people's lives harder because of your feelings and needs. We can hear this in the second verse of Driver's License when Rodrigo sings, all my friends are tired of hearing how much I miss you. The painfulness of reality hitting you in this stage comes through in Traitor, where Rodrigo processes how her ex has moved on to someone else so quickly. Her lyrics, remember I brought her up and you told me I was paranoid, you betrayed me, also signal a rage under the surface of her pain, which leads us to phase three, anger. I think there's so much like anger that goes along with sadness. Good For You is an energetic, cathartic expression of feeling total fury toward an ex. Screw that, screw you. In Brutal, that teen anger infects the singer's whole life as she expresses total dissatisfaction and insecurity about every aspect of herself. I only have two real friends and lately I'm a nervous wreck. A mindset we can see segue into Phase four. Depression is the underlying emotion at the start of Enough For You, where Rodrigo turns her fury inward, calling herself stupid, emotional, obsessive little me, and claiming her partner found someone more exciting. Phase five, the upward turn, is defined as the point in the grieving process in which your emotions fade into something calmer. Deja Vu is a great example of this as Rodrigo begins to reclaim a sense of power and self-assurance from realizing that she isn't the first girl that her ex has done this to and won't be the last. Phase six, reconstruction, is when the grieving party begins to work through their emotions with a little more self-reflection and analytical distance, eventually rediscovering themselves. In Enough For You, the singer is piecing together how the things her ex accused her of really reflected him. In the lyric, you say I'm never satisfied, but that's not me, it's you. She's also starting to conceive of a future without him. In the line, someday I'll be everything to somebody else. Finally comes phase seven, acceptance. In favorite crime, the singer looks back on their relationship, hating her ex, but with a smile on her face, finding a twisted way to value whatever they had while gaining the distance to acknowledge that it's really over. And in Hope You're Okay, she moves on from her breakup to reflect on past friendships, signaling that she is ready to focus on other relationships. In this final song, Rodrigo offers hope, saying, God, I hope you're happier today, a sentiment half-heartedly extended to her ex in the earlier track, Happy but here, sent more genuinely to friends and fans in the line, cause I love you, I hope that you're okay. Sour is a very sort of sad, angry, emotional record, and I wanted to end it with a song that was like, you know, we're all gonna be all right, y'all, we're gonna get over it. When Driver's License was released, it also received endless speculation about the drama behind the lyrics about this callous ex. A week later, the presumed subject of the song, Bassett, released a song called Lie, 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 which he claimed was written after I found out a friend had been lying about me behind my back for a long time. Though Bassett had teased the song before Driver's License came out, fans noted the similarities between the two videos and were further intrigued when it was revealed that both Rodrigo's music video and high school musical, the musical The Series, were shot in Utah. Sabrina Carpenter was pulled into the excitement after fans began to speculate that she was the older blonde girl referenced in Rodrigo's song. Some eagle-eyed fans pointed out that the nails of the girl in the video matched Sabrina's nails in late June aka the same time the video was most likely filmed. These lyrics felt especially pointed because Rodrigo's original version mentioned a brunette girl, but the line was changed by the time the song was widely released and Bassett and Carpenter were officially an item. It's no secret that I've been a fan of Sabrina for, for a minute. Soon after Driver's License, Carpenter released Skin, which fans heard as a response track, largely because of the lines, Maybe Blonde was the only rhyme, and Don't Drive Yourself Insane. Once the full Sour album came out and blew up, the vitriol directed towards Bassett and Carpenter grew exponentially. Whether the album is about Bassett isn't even relevant anymore, as the rumor has taken on a life of its own on TikTok, where he is now notorious. It's about someone else, I'm sure. Though the phenomenon of the diss track initially grew out of hip hop, it lends itself well to Rodrigo's pop album, adding a bold element of storytelling as well as intrigue, and yep, you guessed it, drama. Much like with traditional diss tracks, all three stars seem to fan the flames, intentionally or not, whenever asked about their beef. Driver's license or skin? <laughs> Man, you're coming at it. Driver's license. Would you ever do a response song to the response song? Well, I think we've met once or twice in passing, but I've never had a conversation with her, so 
I don't think I could write a song um, that was meaningful or emotional about somebody that I don't know. The sequence of response tracks create an almost linear addictive narrative of drama that fans or haters can listen along to, hungry for the next dose of drama. Constant updates and posts to analyze straight from the source give fans the sense that they're a part of the chaos unfolding. Skin, it, it it really, like, I cannot stress this enough, is not about one person. What sets these diss tracks apart from rap or other typical celebrity feuds is that they revolve around Disney kids. The media is already fascinated with the trajectory of child stars losing control. So what could be more entertaining than three young adults who are famous for family-friendly content battling it out via clues in pop songs? We could have been friends. If I met you in another life. The constant buzz about the rumored love triangle even caused speculation that all three tracks were a publicity play by Disney. A setup like this would be a savvy move on Disney's part, especially because the target demographic for these songs are teenagers who have grown up with social media, where much of the drama of this unusual organic marketing campaign is played out. I wanted it to go, um, I wanted there to be like a little like thing in it because I wanted people to make TikToks where they could like transition into it. Rodrigo's drama is not limited to conflict with her peers. Courtney Love caused a media storm when she accused Rodrigo of plagiarism, claiming that the Sour Prom promo's aesthetic was stolen from Holes live through this album cover. According to Love, the prom-based shoot was too close to her beauty pageant-themed work in the early 90s. What I want to capture is the look on a woman's face as she's being crowned. I had to scratch and claw and and but I won Miss Congeniality. That's the essence of sickness in this culture that I'd like to capture. Love's criticism is controversial, as Rodrigo's promos pointed to the 1976 movie Carrie as inspiration. Brian De Palma's film not only predates Love's concept art by decades, but apart from the eye makeup, seems to be a more obvious influence on the sour images. And while Love's recent comments said her cover wasn't based on Carrie, in 2019, the photographer of Hole's album, Ellen Von Unworth, in fact said Carrie was their inspiration too. On the other hand, Gen Z's style in general does borrow from Love's kinder whore look of the early 90s. In a similar way that Love has confessed, she took that look from Divinal's frontwoman Christine Amphlett and aspects of her sound from others. A lot of the songs are complete Bauhaus ripoffs. My guitar playing is totally picked up from Will Sargent and Johnny Marr. Arguably, both artistic aesthetics can be viewed as a respectful homage to their predecessors rather than plagiarism. Olivia responded to Love by saying that she loves Live Through This, Hole's iconic, genre-transcending album which popularized grunge in the mainstream. The tension here is revealing, though, because despite their similarities, Rodrigo also seems to represent so much of what Love's music rails against. It was never pretty, so pretty girls just lie there. And whereas us, us, us girls that grew up a little more homely have to try a lot harder. Rodrigo is a beautiful, confident Disney star, perfectly packaged to appeal to a wide audience. Love even scoffed at Rodrigo's corporation manufacturer child stardom by writing, does Disney teach kids reading and writing in a Facebook comment discussing the drama. It's also true that the Disney platform gives Rodrigo a chance to connect with a size of mainstream audience Love never could. But Rodrigo's relationship to her Disney machine is interesting and curious. She's clearly benefiting from it, while her edgier, angrier, more vocal brand also seems to be pushing or redefining those boundaries of how the Disney kid must interact with the corporation. Had you ever seen Bizarre Bark or High School Musical? No, no, I still have not. And I, I don't, and Olivia tell me I'm not allowed to watch any of it. I'm not, like, it's like, it's like a separate world for her. Pitchfork contributor Olivia Horn wrote that, to anyone familiar with the history of Disney darlings and the morality clauses that typically bind them, the profanity that peppers sour will stand out as a break from type. Was there any discussions about like, should you use the F word, should you not use the F word? It was sort of like necessary, it like added a lot to the song and it sort of served that purpose of, you know, being like the angry lyric. Even lines where Rodrigo sings, who am I if not exploited, implicitly complain about her Disney life to a degree that feels like it would not, until recently, have been allowed. If Rodrigo's achievements prove anything, it's that society is finally at least starting to give more respect to teenage girls and their emotions. Rather than immediately disregarding them as silly or fleeting, we're starting to admit how much all of us can relate to and learn from the narrator of Olivia's songs. And this goes to show that there's nothing wrong with 
with being a little dramatic, and it's not just teen girls who feel a deep need to confront that heartbreak and reflect in order to heal. Sounds like it's just some teen girl singing in a room to a piano. And that's the beauty of it. You got a problem? Maybe we can all learn from the teen girl's willingness to be open and vulnerable about that experience. Processing those feelings of sadness and heartbreak and jealousy and anger is so important. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Please subscribe and never miss a take.